I've got a great chin. Is Dillian White actually ready for Joseph Parker? Or is he coming into this fight riding a wave of hype and optimism that's resulted from his brutal KO of the hapless Lucas Brown? Are fans expecting more than he can actually deliver? Let's look at this. Let's work through some of the recent form to see, is there anything that we can take from it? And I'll also look at Joseph Parker and his recent efforts. Because there's a clear argument he's underperformed, at least in some fans' eyes, from what was expected. But I want to be clear, I'm not going to be making an argument that Joseph Parker is underrated. He's just had the spotlight very much on him for the Anthony Joshua fight, where he did some good things, but there were also some things that didn't go so well and he needs to work on. I would argue he's actually a known quantity. But let's rewind. December 2016. So Dillian White and Derek Chisora, they meet in the ring and they put on an absolute 12-round slugfest. Great fight. It was one of these fights where there was a little bit of apprehension ahead of the fight from some people saying, would these styles gel? Would it be an entertaining fight? And would it live up to the hype of the sort of acrimonious build-up that included Chisora throwing a table in White's direction at a news conference? I went actually back and watched that, and it's still hilarious now. Over 700,000 views on IFL. But I digress. The White and Chisora fight, it did deliver. And arguably, it actually saved the card, which it had Anthony Joshua fighting an overmatched Eric Molina at the top of the bill. It ended up being a fight of the year candidate, but it wasn't without controversy. And I'm talking about the result. Fans were certainly divided on who won the fight, which ultimately went to White's way in a majority decision. I actually thought Chisora won when I saw it live. I mean, and he obviously thought he was in front too. When he started taking parts of some rounds in the latter half of the fight, he started taking them off. But, you know, I wasn't mad at the white win. It was a great fight. Some of the rounds were close. And if you swing one or two on my card back towards white, it's a white win. The thing is, though, even 18 months ago, people weren't all that high on Derek Chisora anymore in terms of him being a top contender. He was sort of seen as devolving into that high level gatekeeper role. So that was a sort of turn back the clock performance. But the question was, you know, Dillian White, how good was he? Because, after all, he went life and death with Derek Chisora. And as I think Hatman said at the time, you know, a shop-worn Derek Chisora. But fast forward, Dillian White, he's back in the ring in August 2017. He struggled all year to try and get a meaningful fight. In the end, he settles for journeyman Malcolm Tan. And that was on the untelevised portion of the Terence Crawford, Julius Ndongo undercard. It wasn't quite the splash Eddie Hearn had talked about previously for White's American debut, but he got Tan out of there a minimum of fuss. Then we move to October. So at short notice, Robert Hellenius agrees to fight White on the Anthony Joshua Carlos de Calm undercard. And the less that's said about this fight, the better, because it was a truly insipid fight from a spectator point of view. And mostly because Hellenius had kind of gone into some sort of survival sparring type mode after a couple of rounds he was ultra negative low output and really he didn't look like he wanted to be in there white coasted to a a points win an easy points win basically won all the rounds if not all of the rounds but he didn't look that great in there it wasn't a sparkling effort from white then of course um, we had white looking you know the complete opposite looking like a million dollars when he destroyed lucas brown And prior to that fight, it had been expected it would be a relatively even and bruising encounter between two guys who really didn't like each other. There was some bad blood there. But rather, White, he was in command, start to finish, didn't put a foot wrong. And, you know, as we saw before, he put Brown into the Pacquiao sleeping position. So let's recap. White goes life and death with Derek Chisora in a highly entertaining fight. Dispatches faded journeyman Malcolm Tan with these. Easily outpoints Hellenius in a forgettable performance. 
And then he starches Lucas Brown in dramatic fashion. Exclamation point on that one. And it's fair to say his stock went through the roof after that fight. But at the same time, I think to most of us, it was evident D Dillian White had been making improvements since the Chisora fight. So it wouldn't be fair to say he was completely the same fighter 18 months ago. He has been progressing. We've seen that, you know, with footwork, his technical skills, all sorts of different things, including his fitness and overall physique. He's been putting in that hard work in the gym, and clearly it's been paying some dividends. But the question I ask you is, has White Stock, has it been overinflated on the back of the Brown win? I mean, you've no doubt seen some polls and some, uh, you know, a lot of discussion where it's very close on who's expected to win, or that actually White is in fact in front of Parker in terms of the favoritism. But has he improved to the point where he deserves to be favoured over Joseph Parker? And also, is Joseph Parker's sometimes underwhelming performances, has that played a part in fans sort of, you know, tilting towards White here? You know, tell me, I want to know, what do you think? And it's certainly true that Joseph Parker, he hasn't looked fantastic at times. He's won some razor-thin margin decisions in the last few years, Carlos de Calm being one, Andy Ruiz Jr. in December 2016. I mean, that could have gone either way. I actually scored that a draw on the night. And there was also the very forgettable performance in May 2017. I mean, this is kind of similar to the Hellenius fight. So this was Parker's Hellenius fight. It was against Razvan Kajanu, the late stand-in opponent for, you know, after Huey Fury pulled out. So Kajanu comes in. Parker is expected to take care of him easily, knock him out. It doesn't happen. It goes all 12 rounds. So Parker easily outpointed him, but he failed to impress. Fast forward to September 2017. Then we fast forward to September 2017. Joseph Parker, he struggles to really hurt Huey Fury, do too much of note against Fury, who was dancing around the ring all night. But ultimately, he was rewarded by the judges for his aggression, for marauding forward, throwing punches, catching Fury every now and then. But he didn't really look great. It wasn't the knockout performance that Parker had talked about. It was a very disjointed and sort of, you know, not a fluid Joseph Parker performance. And his stock after that fight, it certainly didn't go up. If anything, it went down. If people saw that fight, they weren't really raving about Joseph Parker after that. But he got the win. And by about this time, it had become relatively evident that any notion Joseph Parker was still the swashbuckling knockout artist that he'd once been in his prospect phase, well, that was well and truly over. He had become accustomed to winning ugly. He was getting pretty good at it. And that was becoming a hallmark of, you know, what he was doing. Look at the Ruiz Jr., Kajanu, and Fury fights. Might not have been pretty, but he was getting the job done. And then cue the fight with Anthony Joshua earlier this year. Parker, he comes in in much better condition than the Fury fight. He's apparently over his elbow problems, says he's got his power back. But it wasn't the performance that he wanted. He didn't let his hands go, didn't really show as much aggression as he wanted to. Sure, the referee didn't allow both fighters to fight on the inside. But Parker didn't empty the tank either towards the end of the fight. And he ended up lasting all 12 with Joshua. So, that, I mean, that was some sort of hollow victory of sorts. I think overall, it's, you know, it's not unfair to say that Parker has fought the better opposition in the past 18 months or so when you compare the respective fights that I've listed. But arguably, even though he had won for the most part, Joseph Parker's stock had been going backwards with fans. He hadn't been looking impressive. He hadn't been getting knockouts. And he hasn't had a knockout for almost two years now. And some of the aggression that he'd once shown, that he was once heralded for, it seemed to have deserted to him to some degree. Whether the elbows were a factor in some of that, you know, well, that's debatable because we didn't see um, a much more aggressive version of Joseph Parker with healthy elbows for the Joshua fight. But in the same period, it's clear to me at least that his defense has become much improved. His overall skills have been improving. And we've seen flashes of improvement from Parker, but he hasn't been able to put together a complete performance. 
And Parker's trainer, Kevin Barry, he keeps telling us fight after fight what Parker is capable of, what he's seeing in the gym. And again, we're hearing a similar line for this fight. And Joseph Parker, he is also saying himself he's going to be more aggressive. He's going to show some more mongrel. He will let his hands go and he wants to hurt Dillian White. And I'm sure for many Joseph Parker fans, they'd actually like to see him, you know, be the mailman on this one and deliver. But you can also make an argument with all this that if Parker says he's going to be more aggressive, that it potentially plays into Dillian White's hands. But I do feel that White stock coming into this fight is higher than it potentially should be. And some fans are very quick to write Joseph Parker off here as easy work for the Brit. I've said I think this is going to be a very tough fight for both guys, and potentially it will go all 12 rounds. Myself, I'm picking a Joseph Parker win, but I won't be surprised if White comes through either. And it does have all the hallmarks to be a great fight in the making. Two guys in their primes vowing to be aggressive. Both can, you know, a good combination punches, good body punches, both vowing to get a stoppage. But the one thing that I have been warming up to, I must say, is the prospect of Joseph Parker getting a knockout. It's not something that's really been talked about much. Um, sort of just looking at some of Dillian White's previous fights, he has been hurt before. And I'm not just talking about Anthony Joshua. Let's just put that to one side. He was hurt by Robert Hellenius in one of those rounds early on. I think it was the second round. For a brief moment there, he did look in a bit of trouble, but Hellenius didn't jump on him, didn't capitalize. And Derek Chisora, he had white hurt at times in their fight as well, especially in the fifth. I know some people will question whether Parker can actually hurt white. They're questioning Parker's overall power these days. But I will say that he's far from pillow fisted. But seemingly on the back of the brown fight, white is coming into this fight with momentum. He's training the house down to get ready for Parker. I mean, even if he is coming a little hot on the hype front, will that matter? Can he still take down Joseph Parker? Let me know what you think. Tell me. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.